image being like the scorch images isn't really that far out. So this is another bit of corroborating evidence in that, yes. that way. How about when you, when you put it over the blood stains? Was it easier or harder to pull off? Well, that, that would be kind of not, uh, comparing apples with oranges. You, it know. Would, uh -huh. it, uh, you would, we definitely got uh, that reddish material, which we then analyzed. In fact, let's talk about that analysis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, back in the United States, we then uh, took the tape samples and under a microscope, d performing wet chemistry, and this was very uh, exhausting work by uh, doctors uh, 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 Alan Adler, who you see here, uh, and uh, Dr. John Heller, uh, who uh, uh, regrettably uh, passed away several years ago. Who was a student of um, the late Albert Einstein. Really? Amazing. Right. He was Amazing. his advisor, as a matter of fact. <laughs> But they spent, uh, the two of them uh, spent many, 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 many hundreds, probably several thousand hours under the microscope at least, doing various chemical tests of whatever it was that they had, fibrils, particles, and so forth. Is this, and is this from various parts of the shroud, or for especially it, of the it blood? Was, it was various parts, but okay. we knew exactly where the, where the uh, samples came from. Okay. We had... Uh, Barry Schwartz is a documenting photographer for the team, uh, took uh, photographs of where these samples were taken. So we would know uh, where, where, okay. where these were. But anyway, uh, you perform chemical tests. These chemical studies would, would, would uh, uh, tell you that, the, that, the, uh, the, that if, if, if this particular reaction happens, then it's this. If it doesn't happen, then it's something else. And, and you just start going through a logic tree until you narrow down upon what uh, is the chemical structure of what you're analyzing. Basic conclusions, there were two basic conclusions. The first was that the uh, blood, the reddish stains, the bloodish, the blood red stains that we see are in fact blood. Uh, and I should mention that these tests, these studies were published uh, and first presented before the Can uh, Canadian Forensic Society and then published with peer review in the journal uh, by doctors Heller and Adler. So the blood was in fact blood. It is not uh, red paint. It's not iron oxide pigment. It is blood. Uh, so another argument against this being painted. Oh, absolutely. Yes, sure. Absolutely. As far as the body image concer was concerned, we could not find any uh, detectable amounts of any kind of protein, uh, fats, oils, organic something that is associated with that brownish color that we saw on the fibrils at all. Rather, what was found was that, the, or concluded, I should say, was that the body image uh, appears to have undergone itself a molecular chemical change by something to bring it into the condition that allows us to see this magnificent body image that we see on the shroud itself. Would you run that by again? Okay. Well, I think it's maybe easiest if we uh, uh, look at uh, a little model that I, that I have. It's a, sort of like a little, tink think of it as a little tinker toy model, <laughs> but it, this helps to understand uh, what the chemical conclusion was for the body image, I think. Uh, I'm going to simplify this okay. somewhat, but, for but, us layman, thank but you. Ho hopefully the idea will come through. Mm -hmm. What you're looking at here is if we, if we look at the shroud under very, very high magnification, if we could do that to the point where we could see individual atoms, you would see chemical structures, a molecule like this, linked together repetitively many, many, many times. This is a molecule of cellulose, which is the ba a basic s structural element of the Shroud of Turin. Now let's, let's take a look at this. Okay, the black elements are in fact carbon. The green and blue are oxygens, and the little white ones are hydrogens, hydrogen, hydrogen atoms, and they're all linked together in this fashion. Okay. Now, let's just examine one, one of these little we links We have right about here. two minutes to okay. the end, so just to let you so know. Just about as w Good. time I think I'm going to need here. Good. So we have, uh, let's look at the link right here, okay? So that link looked like this. We had a carbon, carbon, and a bond between those two. 
Now what's happened is that through a process called uh, oxidation dehydration, in other words, you're adding oxygen in effect, taking away water molecules, you rearrange the molecular structure of the cellulose so that you replace at various locations in the cellulose structure, instead of a single bond between the carbon, we replace it with a double bond right here. So you say, so what? Well, it turns out these double bonds have the ability to absorb blue light, whereas the single bonds don't. So if you think about it then, if you shine white light on the shroud, as you do when you photograph it, white light reflects off, white minus the blue that these little double bonds, actually they're conjugated double bonds, removed from the white light gives you this yellowish, brownish appearance. So the scientifically correct statement for the Shroud of Turin is that the shroud image, the body image, is a variation in the number of these double bonds per unit area over the entire shroud in such a way that we can see a magnificent body image here. And that's the basic uh, chemical conclusion of the shroud. It's a, it's a, uh, the body image is a molecular uh, uh, alteration of the cellulose, very similar to the chemistry that if you took, that would be induced if you took a hot iron, put it onto cloth, and then um, uh, caused a color change. And in future programs, we'll draw further conclusions from this conclusion.